name is Courtney Strickland. I'm an attorney here at the Chromines Law Firm, and welcome to another session of our Attorney Breakdown. Today with me is Kelly Stamey, and we are going to be talking to you about your most asked questions regarding lien claims. We'll discuss the ins and outs of lien law, including what to file, when to file, and where to file to give you a better understanding of this complicated process. Now, hopefully you never find yourself in a situation where you're not being paid, but in the situation that you do, this video will better help you navigate the process. Of course, as with any legal matter, it's always best to speak with a specialist regarding your situation. You want to make sure that you are taking all of the appropriate steps so that you can have a winning outcome in the end. Here at the Cromings Law Firm, we are very much professionals regarding construction law and business law, and we would be happy to help you figure out whatever you need to do in order to get your lien claims validated. At the end of this video, we'll give you our contact information so that if you have any other questions, you can give us a call. And who knows, maybe one of your questions will be featured on our next episode of The Attorney Breakdown. So there are two types of liens that you can file, a constitutional lien or a statutory lien. Which one you file depends on your relationship with the owner of the property. If you have a contract directly with the owner of the property, then you qualify for both a constitutional and statutory lien. If you have a contract with a general contractor or a subcontractor, you may only be eligible for a statutory lien. To file a lien on a property, you generally only need an executed lien affidavit. You can also include your contract, that's the basis of the lien, if you want to. It's not necessary, but it's probably good practice to at least make sure that you maintain it. Now, a constitutional lien doesn't require that you file any documentation. However, if you have a constitu constitutional lien on a property and you have a purchaser that wants to come in and buy the property, if you haven't filed any paperwork, they may not know that a lien exists and that could cause you some issues. So what is recommended is that you do go ahead and get a lien affidavit and get that filed for your constitutional lien. So the answer to this question is really, it depends. When you have to file your lien affidavit, it has to be filed in the county where the property is located. Now each county is gonna set a different price for your filing fees. So whatever county the property is located in, look up that county clerk, give them a call, and they'll be able to tell you how much it's gonna to cost to get the affidavit on file. Also, many counties charge by the number of pages that you're also filing with your lien. So you wanna keep in mind that the cost could go up depending on how many pages you have. And also it's really important that you take note you should never file anything that has not been properly noticed. That will automatically get your lien kicked out if you do not have proper notice. In other words, you need to make sure you are given the proper notice to the proper people in the time that's allowed by the statutes. Now the statutes have certain time frames, so you need to make sure that you're following the deadlines. So you can check for liens on a property by conducting a lien search or a property search on the real property records of the county clerk's website. So depending on where the county is, that's where you want to do your lien search. So this can get a little tricky. What you're going to want to know is the legal names, the name on the record, the grantor, the grantee. This type of information is going to be helpful when doing your research. So hopefully you can locate the property and any liens that are on it. Absolutely, Kelly. It's really important to make sure that you are following the proper steps so that at the end, when you're trying to collect, you've done everything right and you have a winning lien. That's right, Courtney. There's a lot of details such as knowing the specific time limits on your claim that's going to determine whether or not your lien is valid. When filing a lien, it's important to determine where you want to file it, when to file it, and that you're making sure that you're following all of the specific time frames in order to have a winning lien. If you'd like to do a little more research on these topics, you can look at our blog on our website, thecromingslawfirm.com. gives you a little more information about where to file and when to file. 
Thank you for joining us for another session of the Chromine's Attorney Breakdown. We hope we've been able to answer some important questions for you regarding your lien claims. But if you still have questions, feel free to give us a call at 713-715-7334. This video will better help you nav navigate. No, can I start over? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> In five, four. Get off! Sorry. Okay. We got it. All right. In five. Take two on the call. Did you call us at? Call us. <laughs> <laughs> call me. We want you to call us. <laughs> <laughs> like, call us at. <laughs> Take two, voice over. I feel like this is really formal. Hang on. That one just feels weird. And we're up. <laughs> you may have regarding link things. And if you still have questions, feel free to give us a call at 713-714-7334. Nope. That's the wrong number. <laughs> Who are you calling? <laughs> Who are you calling? <laughs> shall, we, shall we do that again? <laughs> give me, give me. It's all right. <laughs> and take two. <laughs> In three. Get it together. Sorry. Come on, Katie. Technically, that's a voiceover. But... Wait, what Stretch is it? Stretch that out and oh, write in the right yeah. number. It is a written for right number. <laughs> oh my gosh. But I was trying to look up, not down. Free to give us a call at 713 715. <laughs> I knew you were going to screw that up. I, I knew you were going to have that, Katie. And. You know what's funny is I've been counting down seconds without actually counting the seconds. Five. Four. I don't know. 